So it turns out that um, my first several stories um, will be taken as really far out into the universe. And uh, the, the first one is about this galaxy cluster called Abel 370. Um, the Abel clusters are a, a bunch of um, galaxy clusters that were mapped by George Abel back in the 1950s and um, using photographic plates on telescopes. And since then, um, astronomers have been um, studying them. And so this was um, an image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2009. And you can see, um, well, this is a very rich cluster. Um, we're seeing hundreds of galaxies together. And uh, most of the galaxies in the universe actually live in clusters. Um, they're uh, a minority of galaxies that um, seem to be by themselves. Um, even our own Milky Way galaxy is in um, the local group, um, a small cluster, a relatively small cluster, unlike um, these gigantic clusters. But um, I want to point out some really um, odd um, looking um, artifacts. I mean, um, we do have lots of galaxies, so pretty much every, um, almost every single object that you see is a galaxy. Um, you have elliptical galaxies, which are kind of fuzzy, and they're orangish red because they consist of um, older stars. And you also have spiral galaxies, like these, um, which are bluer, and the blue light comes from um, brighter, uh, more luminous, massive stars that don't, don't live as long. And, but notice there's this weird looking streak over here. And uh, you might also notice some other, um, what looks like streaks um, in, the, um, in the image. Well, um, just recently, in the last couple of weeks, um, the Space Telescope Science Institute released this image. So uh, this is um, with, um, with the Hubble Space Telescope again, but um, the telescope spent a lot more time integrating, meaning it sat on this cluster and built up, um, it collected more and more light or photons, and so it was able to see much fainter uh, features. So you compare this to this, and um, this area was cropped off, so you can sort of see the, um, the edges of the original 2009 image. So this is a foreground star. I mean, this is a star that's likely in our galaxy. Here's another star, and those might be the only two stars um, in this image. And now um, you see these features um, much better, including these weird, you know, additional weird arcs here and here, whereas before, um, here was that hand of the, um, those two arcs, and um, they're much easier to see. And you can also see additional arcs and um, weird distorted images. So where is this um, region in the sky? Um, what we have to do is we have to go into the constellation of Cetus, which is um, close to Pis the two fish, Pisces. And um, for you, those of you who know your summertime constellations, those are near the big square of Pegasus. And here we just keep zooming in. And this is uh, a region that's out of the galactic plane, meaning um, it's not obscured by the gas and dust in our galaxy. So um, here it is. So the Hubble Space Telescope looks at only a tiny um, patch of sky at any given time. And here, um, this you can see how big this patch is relative to the entire sky. Now, um, this particular um, image was taken as part of um, what's called the Frontier Fields um, Imaging Program. And what H Hubble um, is doing, along with the Chandra and the Spitzer Space Telescopes, is to image six different galaxy clusters. And so here are um, those six different regions. Um, you can see the names of um, the galaxy clusters. Abel 370 is the very last one. And at the same time, they also imaged what are called the parallel fields which are um, regions that aren't pointed at a galaxy cluster. And the reason, well, um, they're able to do that because of how um, Hubble's instruments are actually um, laid out in its field of view. So um, here we're seeing um, a number of the different instruments um, for Hubble. So WFC3, that's the Wide Field Camera 3. Um, this is the advanced camera for surveys. These are the two main cameras that are used for um, the frontier fields. But there are also, you can see, um, other instruments like NICMOS, which is the near-infrared camera. 
Um, STIS is an imaging spectrograph, and COS is the cosmic origin spectrograph, uh, an instrument that was built by Ball Aerospace um, and the University of Colorado. Uh, but because the Wide Field Camera 3 and the ACS were basically positioned um, in the center and then just slightly off center, uh, basically all of the uh, frontier fields were um, taken so that you could um, image with um, the wide field camera three um, on the main field and then the parallel observation off of the cluster could be made with um, the ACS. And then conversely, um, six months later, um, they could um, then flip this around and have the parallel um, field be imaged with um, the wide field camera three and then the um, ACS would be used to um, image the, um, the, the cluster. And the reason why they do that is that um, they're looking um, in the near infrared with the wide field camera, and then they're um, looking um, with um, visible or optical um, wavelength light, the light that our eyes are tuned to um, with um, the ACS. And so um, you're basically um, getting multiple wavelengths um, in both um, of these fields, and, you, and you're also staring um, at these fields with the Hubble Space Telescope um, for as long as possible to get um, that brilliant faint structure that we're um, seeing. And the reason why um, they, astronomers wanted to um, look at these um, clusters is that the clusters, because they contain so much mass, they offer an opportunity for astronomers to actually um, to to get detailed information about background galaxies that they normally wouldn't be able to. So you can imagine um, if you had a magical lens um, out in space um, and it um, helps collect and magnify the light from a very distant galaxy. Um, and this galaxy might be so distant that you normally wouldn't be able to see it without this lens. Well, um, this lens does exist in the form of this nearby um, cluster. And so um, these clusters have um, so much mass um, and they have so much gravity that they can bend um, the background light that's coming um, towards us. And so this, in effect, is sort of like a natural lens that helps magnify the images of much further, uh, much more distant galaxies. And so one reason why astronomers um, are doing this frontier fields program is that not only can they gain a lot of information about the cluster itself, but they are using the natural lens properties, gravitational lens properties of this cluster to magnify more distant galaxies and to get information about not only objects that are much further away, but because um, their light has taken much longer to travel to us, uh, we're actually seeing them much further back in time. And so going back to Abel 370, um, this cluster is about 4 billion um, light years away, meaning it, it took the light um, about four billion years to reach us. But the galaxies that are much um, further that are being lensed, like this, and these, um, these are actually more distant galaxies, and they're even further away than the galaxies that, is, that are that make up this cluster. So one of these is this weird um, stretched out galaxy. Um, some, um, at least in the NASA press release, they're calling it the Dragon. Um, just because it looks somewhat reptilian. But it turns out that this is not just um, one galaxy. It's actually, well, it's the same galaxy that's been imaged five times. So it's basically the light from this distant galaxy that's being bent and distorted. The traje trajectory of the light is um, distorted so that you're getting an image, a repeat of the same galaxy multiple times. And this isn't the, the only galaxy um, where we're seeing this effect. Um, there's another really faint galaxy, um, and um, this is um, one of, uh, I believe, the most in distant galaxy in this particular field, and um, they found that um, it's been uh, repeated three times in this image. So right now, um, NASA has only released a press release with these pictures and a video. Um, there hasn't been any um, actual research papers that have come out, but they will come out in you know probably the next coming year. Um, and what um, the astronomers will be able to do is by, by um, figuring out where these um, images are, you know, not only for this galaxy, but um, these series of images and for other galaxies throughout this field, 
they'll actually be able to work out the mass di distribution in the cluster because you can basically work out, um, work backwards and figure out what uh, mass must be there, and not only the ordinary matter, but the dark matter that um, would allow you to lens these background galaxies like this.